we looked at what a quantum state is and we looked at how we can pull out samples from a quantum state. And now it's time to look at how we do a quantum computation. In other, in other words, how we evolve this probability distribution. So we start with closed systems, which means that the evolution is going to be unitary. This is the idealized version of a quantum calculation. But before, before we actually explain what it means and what it implies, let's take a look at how we transform classical probability, th uh, probability distributions. So remember that we have stochastic vectors which fulfill certain uh, conditions and we transform them with something called stochastic matrices. So after the transformation, whatever you get is still a stochastic vector, it's still a probability distribution. And in this case, this is a left stochastic matrix, which means that the columns of this matrix add up to one. So when it comes to quantum states, we want to apply some operation uh, on the state and whatever we get, we want to be sure that this is still a quantum state. So the, the matrix that fulfills this condition has the property that it's unitary. Unitary means that if you apply its convex uh, conjugate, you get the identity, which means that the complex conjugate of the matrix uh, is its actual inverse. This is also true if you apply the complex conjugate uh, first and, and then the matrix itself. That's all that, uh, that the operation has to fulfill. And as I mentioned, this is this idealized computation that the quantum computer executes. And it has some consequences. Obviously, it preserves the L2 norm Otherwise, the final result would not be a quantum state. And it's also linear since we, we only apply a matrix on a vector. This, this becomes a little bit difficult when, when we want to apply nonlinear operations. For instance, we want to do some machine learning algorithm that's intrinsically nonlinear, then we have to resort to all sorts of approximations and tricks. Then the calculation is reversible. So that's come from this property. You can always invert this matrix. So this is in stark contrast with what you see in digital computing. Because in digital computing, you actually lose information as you, as you proceed in a calculation. For instance, if you apply an AND operation, just by looking at the outcome of this AND logical gate, you will not be able to tell what were the two initial bits that went into this gate? So you lose information. This cannot happen in this idealized quantum system. As an example, let's, let's look at this operation, which is also called the NOT gate or the X gate. So if you look at what is complex conjugate, well, it's a symmetric, symmetric real matrix. So it's complex conjugate uh, transpose, it's going to be itself, it's the same as X. Now, if we apply this gate on the zero cat, uh, we can write out what, what that means. Then if you perform the matrix, multipli matrix factor multiplication, then you're going to see that it flips it into the one cap. You can very easily check that it does the same thing on the zero cap. Now, when you apply it, to a generic quantum state, which is a superposition of the two basis vectors, then since it's linear, it's going to distribute to the, to the individual elements of the qubit. So you will have x applied to the zero cap and then x applied to the one cap. In other words, you just have a0 times the one cap and a1 times the zero cap. So if we apply the inverse operation to the same thing, we actually get back the initial state that we started with. So you can see that it is actually invertible and you can restore the original state after applying it. 